This is the <coughs> review of exam four <coughs> for the fall 2021 Organic Chemistry One cohort. Uh, this exam is on radical substitution and then nucleophilic substitution, along with uh, the examination of uh, kinetic and thermodynamic parameters. So the exam consists of 25 questions uh, that are multiple choice with A, B, C, and D. So question number one asks, in which uh, classification is this reaction properly placed? Um, so there's, uh, these, these symbols didn't translate properly uh, in this app I'm using. So basically uh, the reaction you're shown is, is that uh, with, with heat. So this is a radical substitution. So those are the conditions that you need to diagnose in determining uh, what the mechanism is. So free radical substitution. Uh, this is choice A on this copy of the exam. There are a couple different copies of the exam, so yours may be different. Which of the indicated sites would most readily undergo hydrogen atom abstraction to generate a radical? Again, we're diagnosing radical stability according to this trend here. Tertiary is greater than secondary is greater than primary, and we're considering if there are special cases of allylic or benzylic in there as well and how that will affect the stability. So if we look at and just classify these different radicals, HA is, is uh, primary, allylic, HB is tertiary, HC is tertiary, allylic, and then HD is primary. So really we're competing against, um, you know, the, we're looking at the trend and we would say tertiary is the greatest. We have one that's tertiary allylic. So that's, that's gonna win because uh, once HC is abstracted, you generate a tertiary radical, it's allylic and it's resonance stabilized. So question three says, which radical is the most stable? Um, this is just uh, the flip side of question two. We're actually shown the radical. So let's um, categorize them and then we'll evaluate and make our choice. So A is secondary allylic. B is primary. Uh, C is tertiary. And then D is tertiary allylic. So D is gonna win tertiary and allylic. Question four says, each of these reactions occurs during the free radical chlorination of methane. Which step corresponds to the first propagation step of the reaction? So the first propagation step, uh, this little R symbol is basically the reaction arrow. Um, so these should all be the arrow here. So in the initiation, we're generating uh, two chlorine radicals. And then the first propagation step, that chlorine radical is abstracting hydrogen from methane. So choice A is correct. So question five, what is the expected stereochemistry uh, of the organic product from this reaction? So you're starting with uh, a compound that has a stereo center and uh, you're generating a, a benzylic radical. Remember the benzylic carbon is the one bonded to the benzene ring. So it, it has this structure, that's achiral. And as a fact of that, um, the chlorination can happen from either lobe of the P orbital, so you get a racemic mixture. Question six, what is the expected product of this reaction? So what, what are you really doing here? Um, you need to evaluate the positions or unique sets of hydrogen in the starting material. You have primary, primary down there, they're, they're the same due to symmetry, secondary, secondary, then you have tertiary in the ring here. And then all the other ones in the ring are secondary, they're all equivalent. So with bromine, the tertiary wins, that's what's gonna be substituted and for this one we get A. So seven, which reagent would be used uh, to carry out the transformation? This is a radical bromination. 
So it's a CH substitution and what we've been learning uh, under the current module are the conditions for that, so bromine and heat. Question eight, if radical Y is extremely regioselective in the reaction. So again, we can think of bromine under that regime. Which reaction coordinate diagram would be the most appropriate? So if it's regioselective, it has to be going uphill in energy to form that radical intermediate. So really we're looking at something that's going uphill and has a difference that's, that's positive. And so B is gonna be the, the, the best answer. Uh, C has a smaller, or excuse me, D has a smaller difference. Uh, so it's not going to be as regioselective. So you're given this adjective here extremely, and that's how you differentiate B from D. The other two, A and C, uh, are not regioselective because uh, overall they're going downhill in energy relative to what you're starting at. So question nine, which numbered bond would undergo homolytic cleavage most readily when 2,3-dimethylpentane is heated to extremely high temperature? So draw it out. So we have, there's our pentane chain. We have two and then three. Let's number it one, two, three, four, five. What is this question asking you? Again, it says homolytic cleavage. These are the choices of bonds that you're looking to examine. And so really, uh, you could sort of draw lines here if you cleave one and two, that's gonna generate, so one, two, it's gonna generate a primary radical and uh, a secondary radical. Three and four, same deal. That's gonna generate secondary and a secondary, or a secondary and a primary. Two and three, That's now generating a secondary and a secondary. And then four, five is generating primary and primary. So again, this is about radical stability. So two, three is gonna win, the answer is C. Which is the reactive intermediate? when one octene is treated with uh, hydrogen bromide in the presence of benzoyl peroxide. So that's the key here, peroxide. So we're, we're, we're generating a bromine radical to begin with. That bromine radical is then adding first to the alkene. That gives the most substituted radical. So we're, so we're looking at for something with that structure so a primary bromine with a secondary radical, this is going to be A. Uh, 11, for which free radical can the most resonance forms be written that show delocalization of the radical? This is going to be A. We have a benzylic radical. B is, uh, excuse me, a primary radical. Ooh, C is bad, that's sp2. Uh, D is benzylic, but there's only uh, one benzene ring, so A is going to win out. 12, the reaction of benzyl bromide as shown with azide ion as shown. When the benzyl bromide concentration is constant and the azide concentration doubles, the reaction rate is observed to increase by a factor of 2 and vice versa. What is the rate law? This is an SN2 reaction. You have a nucleophile, you have an electrophile, so the rate equation for this uh, is going to be C. You have your rate constant, the concentration of the electrophile, the concentration of the nucleophile. 13, what is the expected major reaction pathway for the reaction shown? We did this in class, this is SN2. 14, 
What is the order of rates from fastest to slowest for the reaction of the three nucleophiles with one bromopropane? It's sort of irregardless of the electrophile in this case. Uh, you're really just comparing what these nucleophiles are. We said that negative is greater than neutral. And we said that C is greater than N, is greater than O, is greater than F when it comes to evaluating the elements across the period. So we can eliminate uh, A and B based on this criteria here because C and D are showing the negative first. So now we're, now we're evaluating these last orders here. So we look, N comes before O, so C is our correct answer. 15, which alkyl halide will undergo SN1 hydrolysis most rapidly? Uh, essentially, this is a series of tert butyl halides. So iodide is gonna be the best one, this is B. Again, I is greater than BR, is greater than CL, is much, much greater than F. 16, which of these anions would be the most nucleophilic? Again, negative. Negative is greater than neutral. And moving down the period, we have O to S. Nucleophilicity uh, increases moving down the group, so this one's D. Uh, 17, from the data given in the box, what is the specific rotation of the alcohol produced in the bimolecular nucleophilic displacement shown? So uh, what, what the connection between these structures is basically, this is showing you retention. And we know that SN2 occurs with inversion So that's going to be the product. If the retention has a negative 9.9, .9, the inversion has to be plus 9.9. .9. So this is C on this copy of the exam. 18, which bromide will undergo SN1 hydrolysis the fastest? The only thing you can do is, is draw them out and then evaluate. I've drawn a six-membered, or a, excuse me, a six-carbon chain, two hexene, the double bond begins at two, then we have a bromine at the four position. So we have a secondary allylic bromide. And this is, remember, SN1 is generating a carbocation. So we're ranking it by the carbocation stability trend. Let's, let's draw out uh, B. We have the, the five bromo. So now this is just secondary. C, three bromo hexane. This is secondary. And D, three bromo, two hexane. This is sp2, that's bad. So A is the winner, secondary and allylic. What is the principal pr substitution product of the reaction shown? You have a base, which is an alcohol. You have an acid. The alcohol gets protonated, water leaves. That generates this carbocation, which is secondary. We evaluate the beta carbons we see that one of them is tertiary, so we can get a rearrangement. The nucleophile then traps there, so B is the correct answer. Which carbocation would not, 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 not be likely to undergo rearrangement? So we classify them tertiary, secondary, secondary, secondary. The answer is A. It's tertiary, it's, it, it will not undergo a rearrangement because it's the most stable it can be. 21, a bimolecular nucleophilic substitution is a one-step process with inversion of configuration. 
Again, that's the definition of SN2. Which is the weakest nucleophile? Draw out their conjugate acids. The pKa chart is at the front of the exam. Alcohol 16, acid 4, alcohol 16, amine about 40. So the one with the lowest, this is the strongest uh, acid, is going to give the weakest nucleophile. Which two compounds ionize with loss of bromine to form a, the, the same carbocation? So when we're looking at 2 and 3, those are both bonded to sp2 hybridized carbon, so they're out. So 1 and 4 is the correct answer. The peak of a reaction coordinate is known as the transition state. That's the peak, that's the transition state. Which of the following will produce phenyl? Propyl ether. So there's phenyl propyl ether. Uh, so the trick here is basically the oxygen has to be bonded to the ring. So we're making the uh, pair that way in terms of the nucleophile electrophile pair. O minus. So we need something with O minus. The only one like that uh, that will fit the description is C because now we have the propyl with the leaving group. So A and B will, will not work because the leaving group is on an sp2 hybridized carbon. D will not work because that's a bad leaving group. So that's C. So again, this has been uh, a review of module four exam on free radical chemistry and substitution, along with kinetics and thermodynamics for the fall. 2021 cohort.